This is the e-commerce brain trust, a podcast about building momentum online for established consumer brands. Join our hosts and their expert guests for high level conversations about e-commerce strategies, trends, and innovations. Access our brain trust and boost your brand's e-commerce potential. This is the e-commerce brain trust podcast. I'm Kiri Masters, founder of Bobsled Marketing, and I'm joined by my co-host, Julie Spear, operations manager at Bobsled Marketing. Hi, everyone. So on this episode, we're going to be talking about promotions on Amazon, what kind of promotions are available to sellers and vendors, how they can be used to kickstart sales of new products and new brands launching on Amazon, as well as clearing out inventory and helping to build momentum overall for a brand. We're going to talk about types of promotions available, when they're best used, and finally our tips around how to maximize the value of promotions. So Julie, you are literally number one employee at Bobsled. Number one. Been here since October, (laughs) 2015. (laughs) And so Julie heads up our fulfillment team at Bobsled, including all of the efforts that we go through to help our clients increase their revenue and manage their Amazon channel. And today we're going to be talking about promotions on Amazon, which is an important topic because you can't just list your products on Amazon and expect people to be able to find them necessarily. It's also necessary if you're going to be launching new products or a new line of products to be able to build momentum for those new products from the beginning. And promotions are a way that Amazon facilitates getting more eyeballs on your product detail pages and increasing cross-sell across your existing assortment. So Julie, since you've been in the Amazon world over the past couple of years, you would have seen quite a lot of changes to how promotions, what promotions are available on Amazon and, and how they're run. Yeah, I think kind of the standard course when I first joined the Amazon world was to do the reviewer promotions. And so offering either free or deeply discounted product in exchange for an honest review. And Amazon put the brakes on that last October, I believe. And while everyone was anticipating it to some extent, it did seem that when the change came, it felt a little sudden. Um, So everyone had to adapt a little bit and leverage the tools that Amazon has on Seller Central and on the vendor platforms in just a different way um, in order to promote their new, newly launched products. Mm. And it was, I, th- I think it was a great move on the part of Amazon, even probably a little, a little delay ultimately, because there was a lot of trust being eroded in the marketplace in the eyes of consumers. Yeah. I, I mean, it was funny. I, I came from being in the Amazon world as a very dedicated, avid shopper. <laughs> um, and so then when I, when I kind of got to peek behind the curtain a little bit um, and had an understanding, a better understanding of what the reviews meant and, and how they came about, I was a little bit more cynical and looking at them. And I can see where a lot of shoppers might have gotten there on their own without having to peek behind the curtain because, you know, there was always the disclaimer that whoever left the review did so after getting a deeply discounted product. And um, you just, you want to know when you're reading a review, it's genuine and authentic. And it's really telling you the story of how that customer experienced that product. You don't want to think that they're telling a different story just because they got it for yeah, free. Exactly. And so now that so Amazon sort of took that disallowable, is that a word? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. uh, as of about October last year in 2016. So since then, and in the world that we're in today, what kind of promotions are available to to brand selling on Amazon. And and perhaps we we start off by delineating between promotions that are available to sellers on Seller Central and vendors on Vendor Central or Vendor Express because different programs are available on different platforms. Yeah, the same promotions exist today that existed a year ago. It's just that you can only use them (laughs) in a certain way now. And so I think... um, one of one of the promotion types that we have been much more dedicated to using a, across our our client um, our books of clients is the product page promotions and those offer the quantity discounts so you know buy three 
or buy two, get the third for 15% off or buy two, get one free. Would, however, a seller would want to discount or promote that product. Those product page promotions are, I think, a really valuable tool that are well worth leveraging now, more so now than even a year ago. Another product page promo would be um, a cross-selling promo. So if you have a catalog of multiple products that you could offer, it's a great way to kind of open up your store to your, your customers and show them what other products that you have listed for purchase on Amazon. And so it could be buy this product, get 15% off that other product. And that promotion would actually link you to that product page. So those are two promotion types that we think are just, they need to almost be standard course at this point. And Amazon's been keeping those promotions interesting too, because sometimes the uh, promotions are rather buried on the product page. So it's hard for the customer to see. And other times they're a little bit more visible on the product page. So Amazon um, moves the bar pretty constantly for us across all things related Mm -hmm. to selling on Amazon, but they're, they literally move the bar with this promo type because they move the promotion on the product page. And so the customer might see it at right by the um, add to cart Mm -hmm. button, or they might have to kind of scroll down below the fold and, and discover it there. Yeah, it's really interesting. All of, all of the different instances of Amazon.com that get displayed to customers from minute to minute. Yeah. There's a, uh, um, Amazon doesn't disclose this information about how many instances they're running at any single time, but I did hear that Facebook is running at any given time about 10,000 different instances of Facebook to test different features and test how things are displaying and test how people are interacting with those new ways of displaying things. And I, we've definitely seen Amazon testing little changes like this over time and some of them make the cut and some of them don't. Yeah. It's kind of incredible to realize that this is all part of their testing process because we kind of Last fall, we celebrated when we saw that those product page promotions were moved up near um, the buy box and then they went away. (laughs) And so then it it became clear that this is part of their testing process to see where to put those promotions on the product pages. Right. And a really interesting place to look for, to, to get a leading indication of what might be coming through the pipe is to look at Amazon's own brands, of course, and see how they are displaying their own products. Oh, yes, absolutely. The, you can see what's coming up in terms of enhanced content and um, what they're emphasizing in a given category for their products. It's good information for, for your own brand to take a look at for your product pages. Yeah, absolutely. So so we've talked a little bit about product display page promotions, so the percentage off and buy one, get one kind of discounts. What other promotion types have we found work working really well on, on Seller Central right now? You know, the lightning deal, I almost feel like it's the controversial promo <laughs> because it's one of those that in Seller Central, you you can, you have to have your product be recommended for a lightning deal. That's a a very big difference from the vendor platforms where you can set up your own lightning deal. Um, Seller Central still does not have the ability for, for sellers to go in and just create their own lightning deal. It's invite only. Yeah. Yeah, Well, they, it's so funny because they said they took away the invite only, and then it turned into recommendation. So it's, (laughs) a game of semantics. Um, But really, yeah, it's still invite only. And you do have to meet Amazon's um, minimum price threshold and maximum quantity threshold. Mm. So sometimes it can be tricky for inventory management to make sure that you have the, the quantity available for the time of the lightning deal. The other thing that can be tricky is just protecting your margins based on whatever Amazon is saying for the minimum price discount. Mm-hmm. or the minimum price. Um, the real controversial thing, I think, with the lightning deals is you have no control whatsoever whatsoever over the time of day when they'll show. And so it can be a real bummer if you submit your lightning deal, it's approved by Amazon, you have your inventory in, you're ready to go for the deal, and then you find out that your deal is running from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., um, right. which is not exactly prime shopping time. Because lightning deals run on a particular day over a four hour window. Yeah. A four to six hour window completely determined by Amazon. That is, 
the parameters of the deal are really not within the control of the seller. Um, and it's a problem because they the the brand will be selling in sending in all of this inventory in expectation that they're going to be sell, moving a lot of inventory. Yes. But then if it's if they get a poor time slot, then that's a waste of of space. Totally. I mean, there is the benefit that you're featured on the Amazon deals page, but if you're featured on the Amazon deals page at three in the morning for your deal, um, the number of eyeballs taking a look at that, it's a lot less than let's say 5 PM or 6 PM. Right. The one thing that we've seen with our clients with the lightning deal though, is we have seen a significant halo effect, meaning after the deal runs, we do see an uptick in sales for the week to two weeks following the deal, which, and we've seen in some cases, the halo effect as strong as 60% increase Mm. in the week following the deal. So that's a really great upside to the lightning deal. The tricky thing is if you paid the fee for the deal, which can be around $150 for the deal on Amazon, depending on the time of year, you do want to see the halo effect if the deal day itself kind of falls flat because you want to to cover the cost of at least running that right. that uh, promotion. Right. And so what what would you attribute that halo effect to? Is it the fact that on the on the day that the, that the lightning deal is run, that the um, bestseller rank is improving over that time period? I think that can have impact. There could be more eyes on the page. It's not necessarily people clicking through to the deal, but your your product gets more visibility because it's on that Amazon deals page. Who knows <laughs> if the if the A9 kind of favors the product a little bit more after that um, in terms of customer search results. Um, but if if your sales velocity increases a little bit during the deal itself, that will have impact and some carryover for the days to come. Cause like you said, the, the BSR will also, will also improve. Okay. And so how you mentioned that lightning deals run a little bit differently on vendor central, those deals can actually be run at any time by vendors on, on the vendor program. Yeah. The vendor doesn't need to wait for a recommendation from Amazon so they can identify a product in their catalog and decide Either they want to promote it because they're launching it or they want to sell through inventory because they're discontinuing that product. Then the vendor has the option of setting up the deal themselves within vendor and running the deal. They would just need to make sure in terms of the pricing that they're offering at least 15% off and offering as many as the quantity being at the highest level possible because Amazon wants a large quantity offered at the time of these deals. Okay. And so what about some of the the promotions that are available to vendors specifically? Vendors can also do what sellers do in terms of discounting the price and running a sale on their on the on their product for a set number of time. Um, vendors can also do a best deal, which um, can run for up to two weeks. And that a best deal is offer featured on Amazon's deal page. So while the lightning deal is definitely Amazon's version of the flash sale, the best deal might be a good one, um, a good option to have that extended exposure on the Amazon deals page. Amazon deals page, um, so you have even more visibility um, to customers as they're shopping mm. on Amazon. And so, how is from a consumer standpoint how how does a best deal show up as opposed to a lightning deal, or does it look the same to a consumer? They're both on the Amazon deals page. Okay. The lightning deal does let you know how much longer the deal will be offered. Right. Whereas the best deal is more, it's longer term, two weeks. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. The other thing that's offered in vendor that I think is a great option is the idea of coupons. Mm -hmm. And I think that coupons are just generally appealing um, to shoppers. And that is an option that vendors can do for their products. And so when they're running a coupon on their product, it'll show on their product page. It'll be by the buy box, um, in the shopping cart. They can also create, they have a unique URL that they could use in social media or other channels, their own email campaigns, um, 
to send to their cl- their customer base that will drive their customers to a coupon landing page. So if they're using coupons on, let's say, 10 products in their catalog, they can use that URL to drive customers to that page. And there are all their products that are being discounted with coupons. And so I, I love the idea of leveraging coupons um, for vendors. And is there additional tracking that's available to when you're using coupons to see how many people have redeemed those coupons and measure the effectiveness of that campaign? There is. There's separate reporting in um, the merchandising area on vendor that will tell you what the, the clip rate is and all of that, because your fees are also based on clip. So when a, a customer clicks on it and says they're going to use it, mm-hmm. and then another fee when they actually redeem it. And so Amazon needs to track how it's working. Um, so that that information is because that's how they're billing you. And so that information is available in a report on vendor. The other great thing with coupons is you can actually run advertising with the coupon. So you can have your product display ad show your coupon. Um, so there's there's a lot of different ways that you can leverage coupons to to drive some sales to particular products in your catalog. Very cool. Okay. And so in terms of this, we have some best practices around actually running promotions when it's a good kind of scenarios to consider running promotions of, of different types. So some of those that we um, already mentioned were kickstarting sales of new products. What are some other instances where we would want to use a, a, a promotion? Because taking into account the fact that you, you're discounting, generally speaking, you're discounting the price of your product or you're paying Amazon extra fees for the benefit of running these promotions. So that's going to have an impact on your on your margins. When, when should brands consider running promotions and taking a little bit of a hit on their margins? Yeah, you definitely, just going back to, I think it's obvious that when you're launching a new product that you want to run a promotion. And the reason for that is is twofold, in my opinion. One, you want to build the momentum of sales so you can drive up the B- BSR and, and momentum just gets rolling on sales. The other thing is that you want to build reviews for your products on the product page because that ultimately is going to also impact your rank um, or how your your product is being pulled for customer searches in the A9. So when you have a brand new product and you have zero reviews and you can't do a, a promo to, to, to collect reviews with the deeply discounted or free products because that's not an option anymore, you use the promo because you want to drive sales and then you have a post-purchase email sequence in Seller Central that where you're adding value to the customer experience that would encourage them to then go to the page and leave a product review. So with the promotion, you're increasing the chances of gathering reviews because more customers are receiving your products. Um, Right. So that would definitely be one of the instances where you'd want to run the promotion as you're launching a new product. Another would be is, I, I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, is if you're discontinuing a product for that's when a lightning deal could be a great idea. Um, if you're wanting to sell through inventory and liquidate certain SKUs within your catalog, then running a promotion is a great way to do it. Another time, and this is less about promotion, um, but you could do it in the form of a sale is to test out prices to see you could in seller central run a sale and discount your product 10 to 15% to test out the traffic and conversions you get, um, at that level versus the initial price that you had it listed at and measure that up against your margins to see what is still profitable for you and what's that sweet spot for right for you, the price of your product on Amazon. Right. Balancing an increase in volume with smaller margins right. with uh, lower lower volume and higher margins. Right. Mm-hmm. And I would oh I would say too, anytime that you're entering a gift season, <laughs> a gift giving season, run promotions. Mm-hmm. Um, people are going to be on Amazon shopping. So why not take advantage of them being there with a promotion? And at those times, shoppers are expecting deals. So I think it's important to run promotions during those seasons as well. Yeah. Yeah. All the all the times on the calendar that are relevant to your brand and your products back to school. Valentine's Day, Father's Day, all of those sort of holidays throughout the year as well. Prime Day. I was going to say the newest holiday, Prime Day. (laughs) (laughs) 
the giftiest holiday of all. We love Prime Day. <laughs> right in yes. the middle of summer, it provides a an oasis in the middle of a it does. dry period. It does. It does. Amazon, they're on to something with, with these things that they do. <laughs> well, yeah. The, uh, the cynics would say that they stole the idea from Alibaba's single day, singles day. But um, oh. we'll, f- we'll forgive them for that. I'll forgive them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm not cynical enough yet. <laughs> so let's say we're, um, we're advising a brand on, on running a some of these promotions what are some of the best practices that that we recommend before considering running promotions in the lead up to running promotions and then also during the course of of running them as with any time you're on you're selling a product on amazon you need to have an optimized product page um if if you want your products to sell you need to have a page that is geared toward uh, driving traffic to your page and then converting customers to a sale So make sure your product pages are optimized. Don't drive traffic to your page only to have scant information in the bullet points, one image on your product page, and nothing in the description. Um, That it's just not worth the energy of a promo at that point, in my in my opinion. And it will hurt your Um, conversions as well, right? If you're sending all this additional traffic to a page and and it's not converting, then yeah, it's it's a waste of time. But then it also will probably hurt you. Absolutely. So doing the legwork to make sure your product pages are opt- optimized from SEO perspective, images that really celebrate the benefits and features of your products, and copy that also celebrates the benefits and features of your products, it, it's critical. It, so you, you need to make sure that foundation is set before you even consider a promotion. Following that, inventory, inventory, inventory. <laughs> like I, Can you we talk about it a lot. <laughs> inventory. I'm saying it in all caps. <laughs> it's bold and underlined. We talk about it a lot at Bobsled. Inventory management is, it can either be a brand's Achilles heel or they're the key to their success. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if you're planning to run a a promotion, you want to determine the percent increase you're aiming for in that promotion and factor that into your inventory planning so that you have enough units available in FBA to get the products to this, the increase in customers coming to your product page. Yeah. It's, I call it the most unsexy part of marketing, right? (laughs) On Amazon. (laughs) And because promotions are exciting and, and we're looking at what, you know, what kind of promotion should we run and what, what do we expect to get from it? And that's, that's an exciting thing to work on and inventory management and forecasting and, and, and all that isn't so exciting, but it will completely either undermine or boost the effects of your, your promotion campaigns and basically anything that you do on Amazon. Yeah. It's so sad to see oh. And we kind of cringe when we see products that are moving along and it's so exciting and we're seeing the, you know, stock out in three weeks mm-hmm. and then it creeps down to two weeks and you don't want to have that happen. You've done all that work to build the momentum and then to have everything come to a screeching halt and to lose sales in that way. It's really unfortunate. So inventory, <laughs> inventory, inventory. <laughs> we need a whole episode about inventory. Oh, buckle up. <laughs> Fun times ahead. Wild ride. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can make inventory interesting, um, like with charts and some color coding, but that's going to be hard to do in a podcast. How do well, we, maybe we, you know, it, it's a horror theme, the, uh, yeah. horror stories of inventory stockouts and, and how they, how they brought entire products down. Ah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> now that's so, exciting. Yeah, look at that around Hall- <laughs> Yeah, look at that around Halloween just before the holiday sales. It's <laughs> a good idea. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have one more way to sort of prep and bo- boost promotions. Yeah, this is where you want to look at PPC and you want to increase your ads budget and and do some bid management um to make sure that your bids for your the ads that you're running are competitive when you're running promos, because while you're running the promo, you want to, you need other ways to drive customers to the page. If you're not doing any kind of retargeting or outside marketing or anything like that to get customers to your exact product page, you need your PPC campaigns to, to bring them to the surface for customers. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to increase your ads budget for that, the duration of the promo and to make sure you have competitive bids 
our PPC guys recommend if you're running a lightning, lightning deal to do bid plus leading up to and during the deal. And this is a feature in Seller Central sponsor products that gives Amazon the permission to increase bids for ads, eligible ads by 50%. So that that helps make your bids even more competitive in that window of time. Right. And we have a love-hate relationship with Bid Plus in general, but this is one situation where Bid yeah. Plus is advisable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hmm, a feature that will make Amazon more money. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they recommend it, but it is absolutely advisable. You want your product to be seen. If you're going to promote it, if you're running a promotion, you need people to know what's happening. Otherwise, it's, it's not worth it. So... The, the bid plus really does help in those times. Right. Great. Yeah. And I think the the kind of rule underscoring all of this, you, you kind of mentioned it already, is when it comes to thinking about Amazon's algorithm and how they're going to um, rank your product and how it's going to show up, if you're helping Amazon to make money it, as a general rule, then your products and promotions are going to do better. So the lightning deals are essentially Amazon's going to kind of penalize you either by not offering you deals to begin with or not offering potentially not offering you a good placement if they're not able to see that you have adequate inventory and that you're not running a deal with a with a really good um, discount yeah well and that's the key with with lightning deals I mean we've seen lightning deals that have been approved and ready to go and then there's not enough inventory to cover the deal so then the deal doesn't happen it gets pulled that's right too bad. It gets canceled yeah mm. yeah so yeah, inventory, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really important thing. Um, and also it, when it's also good practice to take Amazon up on the lightning deals as they come through, um, while there's the cost associated coming into Q4, even it's a real good idea to take Amazon up on their recommendations. If your margins can handle it. Great. Well, this is, this is a really good primer on promotions. It's a moving beast for for sure with with Amazon and and I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt that there's more different types of promotions coming down the pipe and different ways of displaying them and more crossover between what we what we see on the vendor side and and the seller side as well. Yeah, I'm waiting for the day that coupons arrive in Seller Central. <laughs> that would really I I'll geek out that as day. a consumer or <laughs> as a uh, consultant. <laughs> as a consultant, as a consumer I'm I'm very actively supportive of coupons in their current form. <laughs> As a consultant, I'd love to see that feature offered in Seller Central for brands. Great. And sellers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Julie. Thanks for the thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your knowledge about promotions on Amazon. And we'll catch you in another episode. Sounds great. Thanks, Carrie. So we've talked about different types of promotions, how they can be maximized on Seller Central and Vendor Central by brands. And a few of the things we talked about will benefit from um, diagrams and examples. So you can find our show notes over at bobsledmarketing.com slash podcast. 